was born in Tampa Bay, Florida. It's a refuge for Scientologists on the lam, old people, people from the tri-state area with their children in tow, and the occasional Klansman. Elementary school in Tampa was really weird for me. Um, I first started out in an elementary school that was pretty, a lot of, pretty diverse. There was a lot going on. I learned a lot about ancient Egypt, the dinosaurs there. And then I transferred to this el another elementary school that was in a more rural part of town where I ended up being basically the only yellow kid around. And, uh, and also I had skipped a grade and so I got beat up a lot. My parents are both Vietnamese boat people. Uh, that means that they uh, were refugees escaping the Vietnam War and uh, its aftermath in the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, my mom came over here via refugee camp in Malaysia. My dad via refugee camp in Indonesia. And they met over here in uh, my uncle's dental office in uh, St. Petersburg. They made teeth. Uh, my parents ran a dental lab. My mom was a doctor in Vietnam and she had passed her boards in the States but had decided that she was going to help my dad with his business. Uh, he had learned the art of false teeth making from my uncle and uh, so I grew up you know learning how to make crowns and bridges, uh, casting things, glazing teeth so that they look very authentic to you and me. Back home I was surrounded by a lot of teeth making equipment. Um, not a lot of toys because my parents didn't believe in giving me toys. When I was seven, my dad and mom pulled all their money together to get me a set of Encyclopedia Britannica, uh, Compton's Encyclopedia, and great books of the Western world. And they were really into me trying to read the whole thing. I, I did not succeed, but I had to read a lot of it. So I was seven years old and trying to understand Faulkner and had no idea what the hell I was talking about or reading about. But. And the reason I got interested in law was, I was, was because I was very interested in politics. Um, my dad had been very involved in the Vietnamese, uh, the South Vietnamese expat community and had been involved in politics to a certain extent in Vietnam and I was uh, raised being pretty politically aware. Uh, just kind of asking questions about the world around me and uh, you know part of being pretty different in the community that I grew up in sort of caused me to ask questions about my place and um, identity and politics kind of came into that. I got to work on a Guantanamo Supreme Court case when I was in law school, it, uh, Boumediene v. Bush. Um, I worked on the on Aloda uh, which was one of the cases that was combined in, in Boumediene v. DNB Bush, which uh, uh, my uh, team, there was a bunch of law firms and schools that were participating on, as counsel, um, ended up winning. And I also ended up working for the UN Khmer Rouge Tribunal in Cambodia uh, while I was in law school and after law school and uh, got to go to Cambodia and see what life was like there and how um, five years of Khmer Rouge rule, less actually, it was 75 to 79, four years of Khmer Rouge rule uh, really impacted a country to this day. So I helped started this organization that um, provides an online platform for uh, entrepreneurs in developing countries, my first country being Cambodia that are receiving microloans. And textiles is something that just kind of happened, at, mostly because in uh, the developing world, the textile industry is the most predominant industry. Um, and for example, in Cambodia itself, uh, the, the most important actual industry, besides you know extraction of natural uh, resources, is actually textiles. I do policy work um, and consulting, and uh, it's, it's most importantly, my law degree has basically taught me how to think in a very analytical uh, frame. It's forced me to be a lot more resourceful. 
Uh, it's forced me to take risks that I otherwise wouldn't have taken because when you are uh, trained as a lawyer and you go through law school, you tend to be kind of risk averse or sort of lends itself to being risk averse. Uh, so I would say that it's definitely uh, made me be more conscious of whatever opportunities are out there and to just sort of seize them. And in addition to that, my mom's teachings on thrift have been extremely helpful because it's allowed me to do what I wanted to do um, instead of being uh, tied down by, you know, basically a standard of living that would be unattainable um, were I not to, to go into a conventional uh, law firm or legal practice. Having lived in uh, Cambodia and Vietnam, which are developing countries, one Vietnam is more developed than Cambodia, uh, but still, you know, on the up and up. Um, I've seen a lot of work done by aid organizations that, in order to, to provide poverty reduction, where you know they'll come in and provide just a sort of just provide aid, but not necessarily the tools and the resources in order to make it sustainable. Um, and I believe that microfinance, for all of its flaws, and there can be many, especially with regards to. Um, loan payments that can be usurious in nature has within it provides the seeds that give indi gives individuals the ability to provide a, a livelihood for themselves that's sustainable and gives individuals motivation to you know continue their business grow their business um, and basically make a living instead of uh, you know just having someone come by and you know, build a school or give them aid and sort of disappear in the night. It provides a sort of impetus for an institutionalized, at least on a, a micro level, uh, poverty reduction scheme for, for people, for their communities, um, so they can you know, make a living and get themselves out of poverty.